The Air Force has already begun to use the most modern aviation missiles of the short-range class. Air-to-Air -air AIM 9X Block II Missiles lit up for the first time on Ukrainian weapons. AIM 9X is installed on a wide range of modern aircraft, in particular the F-16. They can also be used by the NASAM's air defense system to destroy KR and other aerial targets. A U.S. Navy-led joint program with the U.S. Air Force, the AIM-9X Sidewinder missile also has 31 foreign military sales partners. The Advanced Infrared Tracking, short-range missile is combat-proven in several theaters around the world. The weapon is configured for easy installation on a wide range of modern aircraft, including the F-15C Eagle, F-15E Strike Eagle, F-16 Fighting Falcon, F-18 Super Hornet, E divided by a minus 18G Growler, F-22 Raptor and all F-35 Joint Strike Fighter variants. As part of NASAMS, also known as the National Advanced Surface-to-Air Missile System, AIM-9X adds a short-range layer of defense. The AIM-9X Block II missile adds a redesigned fuse and a digital ignition safety device to improve handling and in-flight safety. It's equipped with updated electronics, including a lock-on after-launch capability using a new weapon data link to support beyond visual range engagements. Sidewinder is a U.S. trademark of the Department of the Navy, an agency of the U.S. government. In the event of an attack by Russia on Poland or the Baltic states, there will be an immediate response. Allies will strike directly at St. Petersburg, said Polish Chief of General Staff Raymond Andrzejczak at the Defending Baltics Conference, according to BILD. According to Andrzejczak, if Russian forces cross the border into Lithuania, within the first minute, Allies will target all of Russia's strategic assets within a 300-kilometer radius. We will strike directly at St. Petersburg," Andrzejczak declared. To prepare for such a scenario, Poland is currently purchasing 800 missiles with a range of up to 900 kilometers, which will be deployed if Russia attacks. Ukraine is buying us a few years. If Russia wins in Ukraine, we'll have one Russian division in Lviv, one in Brest, and one in Grodna, Andrzejczak added emphasizing that an attack on the Baltic states or Poland would signal the beginning of total confrontation. Lithuanian presidential national security advisor Kastutis Budris also believes that if Russia wins in Ukraine, its imperialist expansionism will be directed at Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland. He warned that the risk of aggression toward the EU will increase if Belarus becomes a fully integrated part of the so-called Union state. Lithuanian Army Commander Raimundas Vykes Noras added that the Baltic states would need to respond immediately, without waiting for NATO's decision under Article 5 on collective defense. Russia controls a bit of coast between Lithuania and Poland because of its strange enclave of Kaliningrad. And President Vladimir Putin remains in control of the far eastern corner of the Baltic Sea in the approaches to St. Petersburg ironically once thought of as the window to the Western world by the Tsars beginning with Peter the Great. Today, in the event of a conflict between Moscow and NATO, any of Russia's warships there would be quickly and easily bottled up or destroyed. Recall, with the addition this year of Sweden and last spring of Finland to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the Baltic Sea has been dubbed a NATO lake by some analysts. On August the 6th, Ukrainian forces invaded Russia's Kursk region and on September the 12th, separate Ukrainian forces launched a second invasion aiming to link up with the main force and trap thousands of Russian troops between the Ukrainian invaders and the border. However, as Forbes analyst David Axe writes, the Ukrainian armed forces appear to have become stuck south of the town of Veseloy, 
and have been brutally ambushed there, losing their most valuable equipment. According to the analyst, around September the 20th, Ukrainian forces with German-made Marder combat vehicles, Swedish CV-90 combat vehicles and STRV-122 tanks moved along the main road connecting Veseloy with Glushkovo. However, there they encountered the 106th Airborne Division of Russia. Using mines, artillery, anti-tank missiles and drones, the Russians repelled the Ukrainian attack on September the 20th and subsequent attacks. Laying mines and firing artillery, anti-tank missiles and first-person view drones, the Russians apparently defeated the September 20th Ukrainian attack as well as follow-on attacks. A drone video the 106th Airborne Division posted this week depicts 15 or 16 destroyed Ukrainian vehicles, including some of the Ukrainians' best fighting vehicles. One or two CV-90s, a Marda and an M2 and Stryker from the United States, Axe writes, The mix of vehicles underscores the importance the general staff in Kiev has placed on the Novy Put invasion. Companies or battalions from the 21st and 47th Mechanized Brigades and 95th Air Assault Brigade have joined the 225th Assault Battalion and 501st Marine Battalion attacking through Novy Put toward Veselo and Glushkovo. These are some of the best brigades and battalions in the Ukrainian force structure. But even these elite formations are struggling to get past Veselo and into Glushkovo. Unless and until the Ukrainians can advance along the main road connecting those settlements, their apparent wider goal, meeting up with the main Kursk salient, will remain aspirational. The Russians are also having a hard time in this area and are losing a lot of equipment as well. The problem, however, Axe notes, is that the Russians have a lot more equipment to lose. As Bloomberg previously reported, Ukraine will be able to hold the captured territories in Russia's Kursk region for several months or even longer. Russian troops are conducting only limited counterattacks, focusing mainly on operations in eastern Ukraine.